<laughs> Harlan Roulette is a terrible, uh, no, no good luck uh, version of uh, Russian Roulette. What happens in 303? Uh, the uh, the A storyline in 303 is uh, the emergence and return of Wade Messer. Uh, Wade Messer, who uh, we saw in the finale of season two, Raylan's old buddy, who uh, has set him up for Dickie in the, in the finale of two. Uh, so he, at this point, is a wanted federal fugitive, and he comes under the radar for helping run a stolen goods for Oxy scam. Um, that a pawn shop owner down in Harlan named uh, Glenn Fogel uh, has been running on behalf of the Dixie Mafia up in Lexington. So the the name of the uh, episode is Harlan Harlan Roulette. Uh, what is Harlan Roulette? Uh, Harlan Roulette is a version in this case of of Russian Roulette. In Russian Roulette, you put in the bullet, you spin the chamber, you take the pull. In this case, it's uh, it's more a manipulation game on uh, behalf of Glenn Fogel, who's played brilliantly by uh, Pruitt Taylor Vince. Uh, and he palms the bullet and still gives the addict the gun. And it's, uh, it's a way for him to kind of humiliate and embarrass this person and exert control, which is, um, I think, Fogel's kind of goal throughout this entire episode, is to keep these pawns that he controls moving around the board in the way that he sees fit. Now, with Fogel and, and, uh, and JT and Beckett, you, you have a couple of uh, new faces, or faces we don't see as often as our series regulars. Uh, what was the casting process for this episode? You know, I mean, obviously we had Messer from last year, um, uh, played wonderfully by James Legro, and we were excited to find out he was available. Uh, with these new guys, you know, that's one of the, the beauty parts of our show, is that we get a chance to really create a bunch of new characters every week, and that it is a huge challenge to kind of um, to create a bunch of people we've never seen and really try to make them three-dimensional. but. Uh, Cami Patton and our casting people have kind of a roster uh, of folks they've had come in for the show. I think um, the gentleman who's playing Errol as a regular this year had come in and auditioned for us like 13 times for other things. Um, so they, between auditioning all the other shows that they do uh, in our show, they've got these people kind of in their back pocket who have come in for them before who maybe aren't right for this or that. Um, but then a role like JT or Beckett gets written and they've got uh, any number of great people kind of standing by. When you were writing for Wade Master, you also were writing for his sort of his crew of oxy addicted yeah. hooligans. Mm -hmm. uh, there's JT, there's Beckett. What, what sort, how do you get into the mindset of an addict? Uh, I'm a method writer, so I really just did a ton of oxy and, and sat around in a corner with self loathing um, being the main focus. I, I don't know, you just kind of, I guess. Uh, from what I've read and, and the experience that, that I've had, uh, you just there's a certain desperation, uh, I suppose, that goes along with, with being an addict, where you find yourself uh, doing things you maybe normally wouldn't do. And I think that's part of where the humanity of uh, these people come, comes from, is uh, they're hooked on this substance, and as a result, they'll go and they'll lie to people, and they'll cheat, and they'll steal, and they may not be bad people at heart, but this substance kind of has the, the best of them. So when you're writing this, obviously there's a lot of rewrites and reshoots and uh, changes that come down from all I angles. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> the first script that I write in those four days is basically the script that we shoot. And I refuse to change a word for anything. Fair enough. I'm, I'm <laughs> kidding, of course. Please, sorry. <laughs> um, so what kind of changes did happen from script to cut? Boy, this is a, it's a great question. Um, I, you know, I, I feel like this one in particular from the first draft that came in, um, Graham had very specific ideas on, on restructuring. We, I feel like we did some restructuring. I feel like the original script, uh, I had a version in the end where um, Raylan has followed. Uh, we had another warehouse that I created where Beckett and JT um, are waiting for Raylan, and it's been set up by Fogel, and Raylan goes to this warehouse looking for these stolen goods, and they're there, and it's this whole trap, but then he's called in a SWAT, and there was like a SWAT team, and I had a very different, kind of bigger, grander version of, of the climax. And I remember the version, you know, we ended up with, obviously, was, was involving Messer at his place, and scaling it back, and making it very simple, and about these few guys. Uh, there's a line at the end of the episode that's pretty badass, uh, where Raylan throws a bullet at Duffy, uh, where'd that come from? I'm pretty sure that was Yost. I wish I could take credit, but I think we were sitting around talking about it. and But he had seen it or heard it somewhere before or something where, um, yeah, I think the line is he 
takes a bullet out of his gun and throws it at him and says the next one's going to be coming a lot faster. Uh, and as much as, again, I wish I could take credit, uh, I'm pretty sure that was uh, a Graham Yost joint. Next one's coming faster. Mm -hmm.